Hey everyone, Josh Norris from Road World here with the rest of the Road World football crew. We have John, Jesse, Nick, and Pat. We right now, no pressure guys, are going to try to help you win your league. We're going to help you identify <laughs> some breakout candidates. Again, no pressure, but John Dake will go first. This goes against Mencio's opinion of Chris Carson, but I like Rashad Penny personally. Mike Davis, as we know, backup running back, now gone to Chicago, mm -hmm. 100 carries, uh, over 40 targets. Penny will fall into that role, but it's more or less the offseason what has happened with Chris Carson. Didn't practice at all in the offseason. Supposed knee injury that's been undisclosed, and he's going to supposedly be ready. But we know that whatever Pete Carroll says, we probably just ignore anyhow. Uh, but, but Penny <laughs> came Pete Carroll says a lot of things. A lot. A lot. Ignore them all. Penny came into camp 12, or not camp, but offseason activities, 12 pounds uh, lighter than last year. He mm -hmm. reported 240 last year, was completely out of shape, Same. which is why he <laughs> uh, healthy scratched to begin the season, five snaps in the, their playoff loss to the Cowboys. Uh, he's much better shape this year, uh, practicing the offseason with Marshall Falk. Like he's going to be a number Ooh. two back that is now in an offense that is not going to change whatsoever. We are still going to make everyone mad by leading the league in runs, leading the league in, new, in run rate in neutral situations. Like this offense is going to stay the exact same. If anything, they're going to run position. more without Doug Baldwin. Perhaps, yeah. Like and he's in a good position. A great thing with Penny, it's not just like pure projection either. He made a lot of big plays mm -hmm. down the stretch last offseason. And even if Chris Carson is healthy, uh, I mean, Pete Carroll has, you know, said he wants to maintain the one-two punch. So Rashad Penny is going to be on the field much more consistently, uh, especially, you know, he wasn't on the field at all early in the season last year. He's going to be on the field from the jump this year. And a you know, very talented player, a player obviously they – the rest of the league probably wouldn't have used a first round pick on, but right. the Seahawks did, and so they clearly believe in and yeah. It's, it's not an either or situation here. I mean, this is an oh. offense where you can fit both these guys Got to get production out of them. And then I mean Carson, the, the injury factor is gonna be kinda High. risky here because he runs so violently. This For guy sure. puts him in, himself in positions that he can get hurt. So and Penny if he has gets hurt, it's gonna it's gonna be Penny. Penny, Penny has the pedigree play. too as a first round pick. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we've seen that that doesn't necessarily matter to Pete Carroll. He's gonna play whoever he thinks is best. And, Dago, you mentioned, like, there's so many changes around the league every single year. This is one team that basically is the same identity other than Doug Walker, which matters. They are the exact same, yes. Just, Brian Schottenheimer basically said this offseason, like, he's not going to log off, like, his approach <laughs> to the offense. Got it. So, yeah, he will never log off. Jesse Pantusco, who do you have your eye on? Uh, me and Pat had to kind of arm wrestle it out for this one because we both had this. So I'm, go I'm going with Dante Pettis. I guess I, I won the coin flip there. Um, Wide receiver for the 49ers. He was the fourth receiver drafted last year, so came in with relatively high expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, they traded had, up for him. Had some, had some injuries, kind of got off to a slow start, but finished the year really strong. Uh, his numbers, the final uh, five games were 20 catches, 359 yards, and four of his five touchdowns came during that span while settling in as uh, Nick Mullins' number two option behind George Kittle. And... Uh, I mentioned Nick Mullins. He's going to get a major upgrade at quarterback this year with hopefully uh, a healthy Jimmy Garoppolo. And there, there might be a, a little added competition. They just drafted Debo Samuel. Mm -hmm. But um, he's a guy that's been going in around the wide receiver 3-4 range. And I think he, he may, be, may have some wide receiver 2 upside. And you talk about flashes, right? Like flashes are kind of all we want to see from a rookie that obviously didn't break out in the rookie year. And Dante Pettis showed a ton of them. What they love most about Pettis is that he can line up in any of the three receiver spots. So Played a little that, bit in the slot. And what that tells me is that he's just not going to come off the field. Right. Like he's going to be on the field in every single situation. He might be the only 49er receiver that can say that. Yeah, this is can... an offense that's going to run a ton of plays too, especially yeah. if Shannon can keep, like, I mean, he doesn't control injuries, but if these guys stay healthy, For he's going to run his offense like – High octane, right? Feed the ball to Pettis. I mean, Pettis I think is, Pettis could be 15, wide receiver 15. Yeah, he's a game year, breaker too. So he's just, a, yeah, he's a special talent. Yeah. And they drafted Hurd at the receiver position, but like Hurd, he can be on the yeah. field the same time as Pettis and not impact it at all. Like Hurd's going to be the guy, like a Marquez Colston or a, a Jalen Samuels last year, where your opponent in fantasy, like so frustratingly, lines him up at tight end <laughs> yeah. because they give him that flexibility because he's going to play everywhere. It's yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Dante Pettis is like a thousand yard receiver when we look yeah. back on this. I mean, he, a year he's ago. so good at oh, creating absolutely. yards. He was uh, 17.3 yards per reception, which yep. led rookies, and he didn't have enough, I, I think, targets to qualify for like the league title. But that would have ranked fourth in the league. Yeah. So I mean, they a, said they were, he has game, you know, yeah, game changing ability. This offseason was a spotlight on Marquise Goodwin because they said they were going to use him as they did. I remember. Uh, and with Taylor Gabriel, uh, the time when they crossed paths in Atlanta. 
Um, but Atlanta, Taylor Gabriel, although he was explosive that year, he still only had 40 targets. Like, it's almost like they're only rolling out Marquise Goodwin in special packages now. That's sort of uh, a gadget Taking guy, the load yeah. down, yes, as a in, gadget In the guy. realm of, like, a Percy Harvin or something. Which is good, but that's more good for the 5% of people like who He's almost like a download candidate like. to get cut. He probably won't, but, uh, it, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Goodwin. Yeah. 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 Nick Minzio. Take it. Yeah. Uh, uh, my eyes are right here on Kalen Balaj in Miami. I mean, this – they have a defensive-minded coach. I'm expecting them to want to run the ball, play defense, if possible. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be good enough to be able to play like this, but this team lost Frank Gore in the off, in the offseason, didn't lose him, but didn't resign him. Correct. Added nothing. They're going into the season with Kalen Blage and Kenyon Drake. Blage is like a big dude and rocked up. Uh, Super athletic. Yeah, like a Latavius Murray type, yeah. big, tall guy. Good speed score in 4-4-6 coming out of college, I think, Arizona State. But he was never a, an every-down back in college. Wasn't, didn't, wasn't that last year. In his Actually started season. as a defensive end, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, like, expecting, like, this big break where he's going to be, like, an RB1, RB2. But he can, he's a guy that can help you as a flex. Uh, if, he, if him and Kenny Drake split the load, I'm not expecting yeah. Blash to take over early down work completely. But Do you think well, the change he, to Brian Flores helps him? I mean, I think they, they're just going to want to run the ball more. As opposed to who seems to hate more. running backs. Right, yeah. I mean. <laughs> and you said, you know, Balazs has never been an every down back, but neither has Kenyon Drake. Right. So this is a completely, no, like, back up at Alabama, targets, yeah. yeah, touches for the taking. In Which is right. crazy because, like, Kenyon Drake ranks high in, like, pro football focuses, broken tackles. Uh, mm-hmm. He's very good. Elusiveness rating. He is good, but there has to be something going on because there's a reason he hasn't been featured. It's so like it's more like an open competition. Frank Gore led the team in rushing last right? year. He's just the been concern tight-cast. with Blage last year was he didn't break tackles. With like he kind of ran into defenders and like right. fell. But yeah, I also love how in 2019 it is like you're right. It's a legitimate excuse that we say Frank Gore's gone now. Like it's still something. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Nick, the only thing that needs to happen for him to break out is that he has more production than Kenyon Drake because he's right. going about 30 spots later right yeah. now exactly. than Kenyon Drake is exactly. just at the running back position, not overall right. at the running back spot. Long live zero RB. Are we worried about Mark Walton or uh, Miles no. Gaskin? No, no, we're not at all. At all. No. Pat. DJ Moore, you know, you can say a lot of things about Marty Herney as a general manager. Uh, one thing he has always done shockingly well is draft first-round picks. He uh-huh. hits his first-round selection out of the park basically every year. Uh, he did with DJ Moore last year. He looked like a first-round pick. Uh, after the Panthers' buy, averaged week four buy, averaged over 60 yards per game. Uh, one of the league leaders in Yak, and uh, you know he's just kind of a he's a guy who can do. You know, the Panthers are changing to their offensive philosophy now. They feature playmakers. They don't feature giant, giant wing statues. Fan. Yeah, and DJ Moore <laughs> did what he was drafted to do last year. Devin Funches is gone. You can't count on Greg Olson. They didn't yeah. add anybody. Uh, the, basically, it's kind of like a, the time is now situation for DJ Moore. They totally have changed their philosophy, Pat, in that they want receivers who separate. Um, my opposition to you, Pat, is that I think Curtis Samuel is a much better separator than DJ Moore. And both are super Much better young. gadget player. Oh. No, I, I, I think <laughs> Curtis Samuel is a far better route runner. Like, when you watch the two, Curtis Samuel is the one who is creating separation early, mid, and deep. And it's funny because we each are nominating one. We have teammates, and it's not like both can necessarily break out here. But to me, where Curtis Samuel is going in drafts, probably will be going in drafts during preseason games, that's just a much better value to me as someone that I think can blast off. Yeah, and there's really honestly nothing to stop both of them from breaking out. They're the top two receivers. And like this is a more efficient, just better designed offense now under Norv Turner uh, than it was under uh, Mr. Mike Shula, which uh, still in the league, so that's good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I, could, we could both be right, Josh. I think it may depend a little bit on Cam Newton's health because his shoulder totally. issue was was a real – I mean, we, we saw the effect it had down the stretch. And if he can still hit the deep ball, I mean, that that's a boon to those wide receivers. Well, but I see, I see him DJ throwing Moore a lot of – So if Cam's but not I, healthy, that's almost good for DJ But I see him right. throwing a lot of check downs yeah. to yeah. Christian McCaffrey yeah. and keeping yeah. it in that part of the yeah. field. Well, yeah, that is DJ Moore's part of the field, too. There's definitely no argument for uh, one or the other. Like, they can both succeed, especially like their ADPs right At now. Points, DJ yeah. Moore's in that Godwin, Rams, wide receivers, Galladay block, whereas uh, DJ Moore is 10th, 11th round. And, like, that is both correct. They can both absolutely – smash at those values. I just will tell you to not be surprised if Curtis Samuel is the Panthers' number one wide receiver. I would be surprised. Season. I would be surprised. There's some interesting receivers on this team now. Like Chris Hogan, I mean, he's interesting. Sure. Rashad Ross, the AM sure. All-Star. I love okay. this guy. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Um, for more of your preseason fantasy football needs, be sure to check out RotorWorld.com. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.